Now that we've made it through the year, I thought it'd be a good chance to reflect back on the 2022 purchases and make a classic top 10 list. The list is not going to be based off the reviews completed this year, but is more of a total satisfaction of the purchase without much consideration to the overall score a model may or may not have received. A lot of the models purchased over the year do not receive reviews due to older releases, secondhand purchases, or re-releases in new paint schemes, so this is a good chance to check out some of those purchases as well. Starting off the list with one of the honorable mentions, the model that just missed the list was the Tangent Pullman Standard 4750 in the CNW patchwork over the X-Rock covered hopper. Tangent models are of the highest quality and this model is no different. Tangent also continues to improve their models to achieve the highest level of details on the market. The 4750 model has been re-released several times throughout its lifetime with upgrades on each time out. This release was extra special with the inclusion of the patched out paintwork for a more unique car that runs and looks great. Actually starting off the list is one of the first purchases of 2022 and that is the Rapido Bud Midtrain Dome Car. And this one is in the Denver Rio Grande and Western Ski Train Livery. This exclusive passenger car was made for Spring Creek model trains and was offered in late and earlier variants. As expected for Rapido, the amount of underbody details is absolutely incredible and the lighting features are great too. This car is not an exact copy of the prototype, but after purchasing some of the Comet coaches and the Ski Train F40PH, this car was very sought after and was easily a great pickup. The next item on the list is not actually a model train, but actually is a model military vehicle. After purchasing an M1A1 Abrams tank from the Dutch manufacturer Art Attack, I've been on the lookout for more vehicles from them. When I saw this Bradley M3 available for purchase, I jumped on the chance and I'm really glad I did. This Bradley model is a combat ready version, so it's not necessarily correct for being loaded on a flat car compared to the M1 Abram, but it still looks pretty awesome. At first glance, the price tag is pretty steep for a small static model, but these are so nicely done that I will still be looking forward to purchasing more of these and the M1 Abram from Artitech. This previous year also saw the release of many older products that were feared to be gone forever. One of these for me was the Atlas F89J pipe load flat car. This was originally built by BLMA and after Atlas bought out BLMA, there was a growing fear that some of these products would never re-release or worse yet, be released in a lower standard than BLMA. These fears were squashed when Atlas brought out the pipe load flat car earlier this year. The release included two different styles, one with and without the pipe load. And as someone that's been looking for just the pipe load itself, for Atlas to release the load with the car was a pleasant surprise, making for an easy pickup. The only end scale item to make it on this list was built by Scale Trains and is the UP Excursion Water Tender Set. This is another set that I've been after for a while and just haven't gotten around to purchasing it and then finally pulled the trigger on it earlier this year. One of the added benefits of this edition was the set was on a clearance for the Scale Trains website and I was able to pick it up for a steal compared to the MSRP. The detail level on these very small models is absolutely off the chart and Scale Trains has once again given us modelers a gorgeous and great running model. Coming in at the 6th position is the Tangent Illinois Central Cabooses that we took a look at at the review just over a month ago. These checked a lot of boxes for me as they were extremely well detailed, had great lighting features, as well as versatility on them is pretty good as well. There's quite a few number of railroads that these cabooses will work with, ranging from your classic CN, ej &E, Grand Trunk and Western, as well as a few others. What's really nice about these as well is I didn't really have any really detailed cabooses, and these were the first that I really picked up, and I'm definitely going to be picking up more in 2023. Another honorable mention that I thought would be a good idea to add to the list was a custom piece that I had purchased over the year, and while it wasn't really close to making the top 10 list, I thought it would be a fan favorite as it's a very unique piece. The model in question is the Florida East Coast LNG Fuel Tender, and for people that don't know, this is a modified well car with a 40-foot liquid container that stores liquefied natural gas and is generally hooked up between two ES44 Jevos on the Florida East Coast system. This fuel tender supplies liquid natural gas to the two diesel engines, and generally these are seen running together permanently attached. This piece was a custom-built piece and 3D printed as well as painted. Overall, it's a very nice piece and looks really good, 
But the thing that makes it unique was it was printed using a 3D resin printer. One downside is that the print lines are still visible on the model and it looks good from about three feet and greater away. But when you're closer than that, there are the telltale print lines of 3D resin printing. I'm still satisfied with this purchase, but this was just a gentle reminder to me that 3D printing is very close, but not all the way there for commercial model making. Honestly, I think given another two to three years, this model would be absolutely perfect, but given the price point for the minor issues, it definitely just should have kind of waited a little bit longer for a piece like this. Coming in at the fifth position is the most vibrant car of 2022 and is one of the most brightest in the entire fleet. That title does belong to the American Limited Models Trinity 3281 two-bay covered hopper, also known as the Frack Sand Hopper. This is the second release of the Frack Sand Hopper by American Limited Models, and these are equally as nice as the first time, and even though American Limited only has a few models in their production, they always make a great product. Now this car isn't a brand new paint scheme. In fact, the pink cars were released in the first run, but this run does have additional road numbers. But what makes this car very special is the model arrived with the graffiti of the prototype already done. Now for us HO scale modelers, we all know that this is something that's not usually done very often and is more of a special run example. Really, I can only think of three or four examples that come to mind with factory painted graffiti, so this is definitely a special car. But what really sets this one apart is the graffiti on the model actually looks pretty good. And that's usually one of the main complaints I have about decals and graffiti is that it often looks very flat and looks like a sticker on the model. Usually hand painted graffiti is the most realistic and is often the way to go. But in this case, the graffiti actually looks pretty solid. I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10, but overall it's very convincing and I think this already makes a great model an awesome piece. And I know for this particular model that was the case with the majority of the community as the graffiti car is extremely hard to come by and is difficult to find for sale. For the fourth best of 2022, we come across the first locomotive on the list, and that is the Athern Genesis SD70 ACE in the Montana Rail Link. And while I did end up reviewing the UP Heritage Unit, really the gem from that release was the Montana Rail Link Salute the Essential Workers Special Paint Scheme. I was very happy I was able to pick up this unit as like many other sought out releases, once they're gone, it's very difficult and expensive to acquire. This was especially true for the Montana Railink units, which right before this run of SD70 ACEs, it was difficult to find any sort of Montana Railink, and often prices went for near or higher than MSRP for 10 plus year old models. From the review earlier this year, the Genesis 2 SD70 Ace did achieve a less than stellar rating and most of the remarks still hold true. This unit even does have a broken headlight needing repair. But overall, the Montana Rail Link SD70 ACE is a great model and the Salute the Essential Workers special paint scheme is a nice little bonus. Coming up in the bronze position is another Athern Genesis locomotive and another SD70, but this is the SD70 ACU for the Canadian Pacific. This particular unit is number 7022 and was one of the five heritage units painted by CP for honoring the military branches. The most appealing part of this model is the paint scheme. As mentioned in the review video on this unit, the paint scheme is painted after the Canadian Navy, sporting a maroon bottom and gray top. This gave off a very similar vibe to the Montana Rail Link locomotive where it was very sought after and kind of had a mini freak out trying to get a hold of this model after the release. I foolishly didn't pre-order the item and my local hobby shops couldn't secure an extra locomotive for me. So when the model was actually released, I was left without one. After searching for a few days, I actually found a unit on eBay for sale and immediately purchased it. From that point, I have seen very few of these for sale, and when they do pop up, it's often for MSRP and higher prices. For the runner-up position, it's arguably one of the coolest pieces in the collection, and it is a custom-made nuclear fuel transport car. This piece was made by the same person who made the Florida East Coast LNG fuel tender and is another 3D printed model. The main layout of the car is the main body, which is then attached to the end platforms, which freely rotate from the main body, and then the two trucks are attached to either platform. This gives quite a bit of pivoting abilities and allows a much tighter turn radius. The main body was 3D printed and is relatively hollow on the inside, but does have good decal work and doesn't really appear to be 3D printed unless you get really close. 
The end platforms are fairly nice as well. Here there is quite a bit of separately applied detail, a little bit on the crude side and very similar to the 66 foot Walther's heavy duty flat cars in terms of detail and performance levels. The main nuclear fuel flask is actually fairly heavy. It appears that there is a three quarter inch piece of bar stock in the middle of it and the ridging details on the actual flask is very nicely done. And it looks to be 3D printed, even though I'm not 100% sure on that. And then it's all painted in a metallic silver paint. And the nuclear fuel flask is detachable from the main body. Overall, the piece is fairly well done. It is fairly expensive for what you get, but the piece is custom finished and it's a ready to roll model upon purchase with the seller doing the most of the work. I'm really happy with this model and I plan to get more in the future. Usually when they run these cars, they do them in sets of three or four. And then they have the idler cars on either side of the fuel flasks, as well as the DODX security caboose at the end. So I'd like to get a few more of these as well as the caboose, but really it's just overall a very stunning package and really one of the highlights of the collection. And last but not least, the favorite purchase of 2022 was none other than the Spring Mills Depot DODX heavy duty flat car. This car has been several years in the making and it finally was released to the public earlier this year and I've been personally waiting for this car for quite a while. I originally put in an order for a handful of these three or four years ago and when they released the video and photos of pre-production samples that arrived in mid-2021, I went ahead and pre-ordered quite a few more and finally they were shipped out to me about mid-2022. I ended up purchasing quite a few of these as well as some of the other accessories like the chain tie downs, which are honestly amazing by the way. The scale brass chain and the other little details on the tie down come together and they just look perfect for HO scale. The only thing I wish is that the military didn't use 12 to 15 of these per each side of the tank. So you really need about one package, about 20 tie downs to tie down one tank. If you got two tanks per flat car, the price of these models really goes up fairly quickly. Regardless of the tie-downs look great and I really wish I would have got more before they were sold out. Along with the release of the flat car there were some containers that were released with them and they add quite a few variants of that. Some of the more normal looking containers were your standard 20 foot convex containers and they sold these in three packs with different colors as well as printing and they all look fairly nice. Really the 20 foot containers aren't anything special from your normal 20 foot containers from other manufacturers but I still really enjoyed them. The containers that are extremely nice are the Tricon and Quadcons, which as their name implies are three and four containers respectively that link up to the same size as a 20 foot container and are pretty awesome. They got relatively good mold on detail and printing and they all link up together and they are available in several different colors. So I went ahead and purchased quite a few of these and there's something I haven't really seen before, but whenever you see these military trains, it seems like they always have a few cars of containers at the beginning or at the end. Plus the pre-production samples of all the different colors and mixing and matching of the tri and quad cons made it look pretty snazzy on the heavy duty flats. Now to the actual flat car. These things are also extremely nice with really all the details you could ever want. These cars were slated to be reviewed and really the script for the review is partially finished, but just the number of different details, different builders, different road name and specific details and really all just the different printing and showing you guys all the different details was quite a bit difficult to do in a relatively short time. And frankly, these cars have quite a bit of detail for a pretty plain flat car. I think the favorite feature of these cars is the actual decks, which are seemingly pretty plain. But when you get down close to it, there are the openings for the certain tie downs and these tie downs are open. So you can see down onto the tracks as well as the channels for the tie downs for the military vehicles have really good channel detail and they're different per road number. In the end, I bought probably more than I should have. And then when they released and eventually sold out, I regret not getting more of these cars. And while it does seem like there will be another production run, these cars have increased in price quite a bit from the manufacturer and they're very hard to get on the secondary market without paying a pretty penny for them. Plus these cars look great for the idler cars for the nuclear flask transport car. So that's the top 10 of 2022. It was honestly pretty difficult narrowing it down to just 10 products as there was quite a good year for model railroading and just a lot of awesome and unique items that came available in 2022. But let me know what you guys think in my top 10 list. What did I miss? What do you think of the products that made the list? What if they're rated too high? But what do you think will be on the 2023 list? But that's all I got for you guys right now. Comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.